What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoArt video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to build the ultimate laptop gaming setup. Gaming notebooks have come on so much in the last couple of years, and for those looking for a more portable solution that still works well when they're sitting in a home office or bedroom, this can be a great solution. Plus, with great deals now available on gaming laptops as back-to-school deals flying around and all that jazz, it might actually be a good time to consider picking yourself up something like this. In this video, I'll be walking you through the notebook, just how it performs, some of the best peripherals you can pick up for it, including a keyboard, mouse, and a monitor. Let's do this. <laughs> Now, a couple of months ago at this point, we actually did a roundup over on geekawatt.com of some of our favourite gaming notebooks on the market. The best designs for those looking to game at 1080p, 4K, and most importantly, 1440p. On that roundup was this, the MSI Crosshair 15, in particular, the Rainbow Six Siege Edition. Now, we thought this notebook deserved a recommendation because it's got great specs on paper, you've got an RTX 3070, the laptop design GPU in particular, a 12th gen Core i7 12700H, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. I mean, compare this thing to a PC build and the on-paper specs are actually pretty good. The 3070 in this is pretty powerful, it gives great 1440 and 1080p gaming, and for actually playing your favourite titles on the go, it's an awesome shell. But it got me thinking, one of the big downsides of a gaming laptop is that when I'm at home, I'd rather be using a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, and getting that desktop experience. If the hardware in this is basically desktop grade or thereabouts, why isn't that possible? At this point we received an email from MSI who offered to send over their Crosshair 15. Now you can see this one is not going to be to everybody's taste but I quite like it. It's got this Rainbow Six Siege colorway edition which I think looks pretty cool. You've got like the React logos on the mouse pad, you've got this really cool kind of bright yellow acrylic, colour coded WAS and D keys on our fully customizable RGB keyboard and this really cool colour gradient as well. I would love it, it is a bit out there. When you look at the notebook from the rear, you've got that Rainbow Six Siege map design with this really nice yellow colour accent that feeds through from under our 1440p display. The notebook itself looks pretty solid. You've got plenty of cooling at the back. The biggest factor with a gaming laptop is whether the cooling's any good. If it isn't, you're gonna have some bad frame rates. Thermal throttling is really, really an important topic to discuss with a gaming notebook, so good cooling is always good to see. We've got a full-size Ethernet port as well, so that when you're at your favourite LAN, you can hook up latency free and join in the party. HDMI, we've got USB-C, super speed port, so a nice fast USB port, a USB type A and a headphone mic combo jack. If we spin round to the other side, we've got basically much the same. Another USB 3 port of a type A variety and a USB 2 port of a type A with your integrated power connection. Overall though, it's nice. The keyboard's going to be great for gaming on the move and while it won't quite stand up to a fully mechanical keyboard, it's going to do the job nicely. RTX graphics as well to get access to DLSS and ray tracing for good measure. And overall, it's a design that's not going to be for everyone, but you'll be glad to know they do do a non-Rainbow Six Siege version if you're looking for something just a little bit more toned down. As much as our 15-inch notebook display is going to work great with a high refresh rate, it's perhaps not going to be quite as immersive as the monitor I've opted to go for for our full laptop gaming setup. This is MSI's 323CQR. We've had it in the office for, I want to say, like a year now since it came out. It's a VA panel with a 165Hz refresh rate and a Quad HD resolution. We're talking 2560 by 1440 with, I think, a 1000R curve. Really, really heavily curved, actually, for the size of the display, which is really, really immersive. You've got a webcam at the bottom, which is perhaps best avoided, but all in all, it gives you fantastic picture quality at a pretty decent price point compared to the rest of the market. I'll be pairing our keyboard up with the MSI Vigo GK50 Elite. Now, MSI are not quite as new to the peripherals game as you might think. They've been making keyboard and mice for a while, but this is genuinely, like, legitimately one of my favourite keyboards ever. If you take a look at the design of the keyboard, it's got kind of a mix between a low profile and a non-low profile design. So you still get that fairly chunky feel when you hit the keys, but they're also not massive. It's got kale box white switches as well, which feel awesome a full form factor, and while it lacks many like macro or customizable buttons, you don't get media control keys, it's also very affordably priced. 
I daily drove the GK50 for like two years and the GK50 Elite is a nice upgrade with a few more features, a bit of RGB and all in all, just a very, very nice design that we're fans of here on the channel. The MSI GM41 Clutch Lightweight Gaming Mouse completes our keyboard and mouse combo. They do do a wireless version of this as well, where you could just pop the dongle into the back of the monitor. That's something I have on my gaming setup is just have all of my dongles and stuff in my monitor and then when my monitor powers up, my peripherals do too. Weighing in at just 65 grams, it's one of the more lightweight mice that doesn't have holes in. You also still get some RGB and the wireless version, while slightly heavier because of the battery, has a cool little dock you can pop it on. I quite like this one though, it's also very good value for money. I think the one aim I had with this setup was to suggest peripherals that were very good, but equally didn't break the bank too much, as that's never something you want to have in a setup like this. Finally, we need to wrap our setup up with our headset. Now for this, I've got a couple of choices. There's an MSI one and a Logitech one that I thought were both decent shouts. MSI's DS502 is a more affordable option. It's got a nice comfortable suspended headband, which I like, decent audio quality, and the microphone is okay too. However, we recently got in the office the Logitech G733. One of our writers has heard great things about this headset, so we got it in to try it out and we're very impressed. I think for our laptop setup, having a wireless headset is perhaps a little bit more practical as it can also go with you on the move to connect up while you're gaming out and about wherever you might be. It's got fantastic sound quality, a very good microphone and even a little bit of RGB which we can configure in software. So let's go ahead, get that thing unboxed and that sort of completes our gaming setup. This thing is so comfy, it's unreal. It's also got pretty good passive noise cancellation as the ear cups hug your ears fairly tight, blocking out any external noise. You can also adjust the headband with this here to make it larger or smaller. You just pull it off and then you can change the notch up or down a little something like so, if it will clip on at all. There we are. Pop that over our monitor and we're good to go. I'm gonna add a couple of accessories to give this setup a little bit more spice, shall we say, and make it feel that little bit more homely, that little bit more real. And then we can go ahead and plug our laptop up and get gaming, I suppose, and see what this Rainbow Six Siege Edition is made of. Nice, there we are. So in theory now, if we boot our laptop up, we should hopefully get a bit of an image through. I don't know whether our monitor is on. Oh, that looks like progress. So the notebook screen is on. Let's put my very, very secure pin number in. Oh, oh, we did a thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Is it on the wrong input? That could be the cause. Oh, by the way, oh, it's working. Oh, look at that. By the way, if I uh, forgot to mention earlier, I've popped our monitor on a Duronic monitor arm. They're our favorite monitor arms. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got 18 of them in the office on every single desk. They're amazing. They separate your monitor from your desk and give you loads more real estate. And they fit any basic compatible monitor with a 75 or 100 millimeter mount, which is basically every monitor out there other than maybe like a huge 43 inch behemoth. Nice, I'm gonna swap sides of the desk and we're gonna have a few games on our setup and test it out and see how good can a laptop powered setup actually be and is it worth some of the bonuses you get in terms of portability but perhaps the compromises in terms of performance hopefully the answer is yes oh we've been shot at we are being shot at oh here we go we're diving into our first game bit of Fortnite. we're kind of running a mix of competitive settings and also 1440p and so far i mean looking at the frame rate the results are pretty decent 190 200 frames per second so far on average our lovely little 3070 proving Pretty powerful in this instance. Yes, first kill on the board. Lovely stuff. Oh, he was coming for me for ages. Oh, the adrenaline is flowing through my veins right now. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Right, has he got anything that I like the look of? Got all of that. We'll have the ammo. Frame rate's looking solid. Graphics looking fan dabby dozy. It's a bit risky, but let me give you guys a super quick look at the settings that we're running. 1440 low, DLSS, render distance to far. Basically, competitive settings. They're the same. They don't need saving. Basically, competitive settings across the board. I can hear a little bit of commotion over the river. 1440p then on our monitor drive. Driving our notebook display on my other side, working absolutely A-OK. -okay. Of course, the idea is when you're running on your desktop setup, you use the monitor, and when you're out and about, you use the notebook. They've both got the same screen resolution. I mean, you can have parity with your settings, but obviously get that little bit more detail when running on the desktop mode with a bigger screen and a bit more immersion. There's only eight left. Oh my goodness, there's only eight players left. How's that happened? How has that happened? I I've got to make it into the zone. I'm just going to go for it. I've got no other choice. Oh, bloody Nora, this is not, this is not good. This is really not good. No, I'm... Right, where's the character? Where's he gone? Where is he? Where's the person? Yes, core! Cool! Beautiful. How did I manage that? 
I had a dog. I had a, a person. Oh, goodness me, goodness me. Just give me everything. Give me it all. And then let's get out of here. Oh, it's been a decent, a decent... I'm, I'm pretty happy so far with, with my performance today in Fortnite. I've certainly had worse moments. Don't know which gun. Which gun do I have? Is it going to be a short range fight? Is it going to be a long range fight? There's three left. Three people. Oh, third, 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 third. I saw him, I had the wrong gun out, and he's just been killed as well. The game's over, that was not a bad result. Fortnite looking uh, pretty good on this PC. Uh, performing actually very well indeed. The next title we're going to jump into is a bit of F1 2022. It's one of my personal favourite games at the moment, so I'm hoping the performance we can achieve is pretty good. If we take a look here, we've got the preset on high overall, you can see just there. And we're also going to turn on ray tracing, the quality as high, the shadows, the reflections, the ambient occlusion, and the transparent reflections on as well. Ray tracing, for those of you that don't know, is where the GPU will actually path the light sources from the source. So if there's like a light on the back of a car, and it will then see which other objects in the scene it interacts with. That's why it makes your shadows and reflections so much more realistic and can really level up games in many respects. The rest of it we're going to leave on high as well. Nice, nice. I think that's pretty much it. And if we jump into the video mode, F1 has like two settings for some reason. We're going to drop our anisotropic filtering down to eight times. We're going to enable NVIDIA DLSS and set it to the balance preset. You can go to quality if you want the best visual quality or performance. Balance is going to give us that nice middle ground. Basically, it's an AI backed rendering scaler that's going to give us the resolution, say, of 1440p in our case, but at the frame rate she'd achieve with 1080p. So it uses AI to upscale the image and there's a few fancy bits of trickery, gives you more frame rate. And on a laptop where your laptop GPU has slightly less power, that can be very, very important. If we jump out of there, let's have a quick race, shall we, and see what kind of results we're able to achieve with, of course, our 3070 laptop GPU. For those of you who haven't watched the channel before, you may not know, but I am a massive, massive, massive Formula One fan. We're going to have a race around Brazil. I think uh, just the one, not the two. Hit advance. And of course, who else could I be other than the one and only Lando Norris? Much like in Fortnite, we've also got our frame rate counter in the top left. It's capped at 60 FPS in the menus, but once we jump into the game itself, it should reach a slightly higher level. Or at least that's the plan. Oh, okay, that was 80 for a second there. Remember, for a racing game, 45, 50 FPS is where you want to be. Of course, 60 overall across the board is also useful as well. Decent start. Image quality looks pretty good to me. And the frame rate is at nearly 80 frames per second. Very nice indeed. Oh, that was a slightly dubious move. Oh, I've got to hand the position back. No, what a disaster. That's right, I'll come for him this time. Oh, I've lost, I've lost a place. Oh, I've lost two places. No, this is a disaster. Here we go, right. Oh, and I've lost three. I've lost three places. Gain that one back, shall we? Oh my goodness. Yes, thank you. We got a bit unlucky there with the elite. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, chaps, this has not gone well. This is like the game I'm supposed to be good at. And now we're down flailing in. What place are we in? 16th. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. Up to 15th. Bit of a late lunge down the inside. Looks like we're holding the position. Yes. Frame rate's good. I actually can't believe, to be honest with you, from a laptop that we're getting this kind of frame rate at 1440p high settings with ray tracing enabled. I mean, it wasn't all that long ago, right, that ray tracing had a bit of a performance hit and everyone was going, yeah, you can't have that on a laptop. Not anymore. Those days are gone. It looks like we could be on the verge of making up a few places. Down the inside we go. Yes, it's a bit messy, but we've got it done. <laughs> I can't believe how much fun this game is. It looks awesome as well. Our notebook did a great job. It's really cool to see that you can actually game on a laptop, out and about, on the move, or you can, of course, plug up to a larger display to get a slightly more immersive gaming experience. Oh, chaps, chaps, chaps. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it really does give a great idea of the versatility and design that this could offer. There is one thing I do want to test out, though, before we round off the video today, and that's test the microphone quality of the integrated mic Logitech headset. So if we jump into Windows Voice Recorder, oh, it needs an update. But how can a voice recording software need an update that takes minutes? I downloaded Fortnite quicker than this. <sighs> Right, stuff this, I'm giving up on voice recorder. I'm instead gonna use NVIDIA screen recording on the desktop. So turn the microphone on, hit record, and hopefully we should be able to do a mic test. So you're using the integrated mic here. It is Discord certified. It's not gonna be as good as a desktop studio mic setup, but it is gonna be good enough to get talking with your friends and communicating on apps like Discord, Skype, all of that good stuff. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks to MSI for making this video possible. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.